Fred Film Radio, this is Nicola Comotti here at the 74th edition of the Venice Film Festival and today I'm joined by John Alpert. Welcome. Hi Nico, how are you? Not too bad. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm very happy to be in Venice at the festival. Um, Did you already, um, the, um, the audience uh, screening is already, already took place? No, like, it's, what, it's in a couple tonight, minutes. Right? Yeah. I'm sitting here like this because nobody's, <laughs> nobody's ever seen our film in public before. I think you might be one of the only people in the world that's yeah, ever seen it. I've been one of the few, you know, like the snobby press and uh, they really? loved it. They loved it, and I loved it too. Yeah. I think it's like a wonderful piece of document because it, I don't know, th there's so many aspects and facets in the, into this film. It's not just about the story of yourself or the cameraman, mm -hmm. but also it's the sort of like the evolution and devolution of uh, an ideology all throughout. And there's so many little hints of how to see this film. There was, I, I just enjoy a lot of films that like he, they don't have a, any. He's a very sophisticated viewer, this is good. I you think so. Yes. There you, you go. Know. Now I lost my friends. These, are, these, I don't know these, what these are things that I haven't even thought about, and I made the film. That's great. Just write it down. You yeah, know, you use, it, use it for your pleasure. Well, I've already had pleasure. the press conference. <laughs> it's too late. Gosh, I should've, we should have started here first at Fred. Yeah. But I guess maybe the, the whole, you know, like, kind of like just shrinking the whole thing into one single um, thought is, mm -hmm. do you think you can make this kind of film into such a depth? Only if you shoot it for like more than 50, 40, 50 years. It's the only way to get to this kind of depth in a film. Um, you know, there's lots of different ways to make films. Mm. Uh, and I made a film in, in, um, in one day once. And then I didn't, want the my, yeah. I didn't want the producers to know how quickly I made it because they usually pay us to make a film <laughs> over the year. And so I took the whole crew and I said, don't you tell them <laughs> that we only worked on this for one day. But I think um, it's, it's very important with a, a subject that I think has such importance, like mm -hmm. Cuba, and not only has importance for the Cuban people, but for people everywhere, because there was a, an astonishingly unique experiment that they undertook down there with very limited resources. Um, and sometimes only by looking at the same thing over a long period of time can we really understand it. Um, listen, uh, your high school girlfriend, when you fell in love with her, you fell in love with her like this, but if you spent the next 50 years with her, you'd have like a completely different feeling. So time is an important variable. And we were, we were lucky enough that, um, that, that we were able to go there over these 50 years, and then we were really lucky that Netflix thought this was a great yeah. idea. There's a, there's a kind of physical process as well as, as the audience while you watch this film because I could not stop smiling throughout oh. the first half of the film and then you just literally have you started feeling almost <laughs> like a, a pain in your cheeks and slowly but surely it just goes down into like a very worried did, and almost did, like did you, yeah did you ever think I was going to win in arm wrestling because I lost every time I lost I like that that was a wonderful like motif yeah and I always lost but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but actually when, to say when when Lilo beat me and she was 88 years old, that was humiliating. That's what, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was terrible. But she sure. Beat I guess me. it's just all the time carrying that heavy camera. But probably you know, all for the years it went a bit. It just wore me out. You yeah, know, when I used go. to be like about seven feet tall, but you know, carrying those big cameras just kept pushing me down. <laughs> but tell me, um, what was your actually your personal uh, experience trying to like create this patchwork? You know, like sitting on your desk, jotting down the ideas, how to structure everything, of course, putting the voiceover. So pretty much like reliving through your tapes what you felt and, you know, seeing yourself as, as a young person and then just like ending up, of course, in 2016. How was your like personal uh, almost experience? It, it, it seems like a catharsis as, as well that you could uh, live through. Certainly is that there's an element of that. There's uh, there was an element of discovery. You know, I, mm. um filmed a lot of these things many, many years ago. Yeah. Um, there was a time in my life when I remembered every second of everything that I filmed uh, in a sort of disturbingly photographic way. But if I ever filmed you or anybody here for more than three or four seconds, I would remember them. I'd remember their names. I'm, I'm old. I mean, you know, the timeline that affects the characters in the film affects me as well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when Netflix came aboard, we got the resources to be able to go back into the vault and dig up a lot of these old tapes, uh, many of which had deteriorated, mm -hmm. and to send them off to the laboratory to get them reconstituted and to be able to watch them again. So, for example, there's, there's a scene in the film uh, with the three peasants in which the borregos yeah the borregos in which i ask for my wife to be able to 
taste the rum. I, had, I dragged my whole family around on this adventure with me. I had my two-year-old daughter. I wanted her to be able to ride the goat, and I wanted to see who was stronger, me or these 70, 80-year-old peasants. Um, I didn't know that that existed. Yeah. Uh, and so it was pretty exciting to find a lot of this old material mm -hmm. and to be able to use it for the film. And tell me, what's your relationship now with Cuba? It's much more than just, you know, a place, I think, for you. There's something, you know, like you probably grew up with this as a, as a person, as a man as well. You know, like that, there's that scene that really stuck in, uh, with me, you know, seeing uh, those, um, you know, in Cuba, like crying for Fidel's uh, mm -hmm. passing and you just see like a little Minnie Mouse kind of uh, iPhone cover, you know, filming the, the parade. It's yeah, just it's like, really, yeah. yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> things, things really changed and, mm -hmm. and I was privileged to be a witness to this and I was privileged that my friends in Cuba, ranging from the peasants to Fidel, trusted me and, and opened up their lives. Uh, so Cuba is, uh, has been entwined with my life mm. in, in many ways. Uh, it's not to say that it's the only thing I've done, um, but in general, I respect the people that I'm spending this much time with. I, I, I couldn't spend time with them if I didn't find them interesting as people and interesting in what they were doing. Uh, but we do this in a lot of our films. Um, I followed uh, a cowboy from South Dakota mm -hmm. for 24 years. Um, he's actually one of my best friends in the world, and I talk to him once a month on the phone. I didn't have the opportunity to do that with Fidel or with uh, these characters because of the isolation of the two countries. Um, I, I, I followed three criminals from Newark, New Jersey for uh, 15 years of filming, and uh, when two of them died, I'm still friendly with the mm -hmm. one that's still alive. So I become um, personally close to the people that I film. And your way of filmmaking as well, as you as you just pinpointed, like the concept of time, it's very warped. You know, there's, there's something... The, the pace of the film itself is like almost an action thing, you know. Mm -hmm. the, maybe it's because it's so engaging, and then of course you're reminded that the time is passing by by the little numbers uh -huh. that appear, and maybe the wrinkles that appear, and also on the, on, on the character's face. I just wonder uh, the ed you know the editing process. So the, for especially for this project, mm -hmm. um, are you a very graphic person also for the med uh, for, for the editing um, stage in filmmaking? So you just create your own let's call it almost like a screenplay, so like a vi visual screenplay, or you just, uh, you know, it's just time to like so, so lock yourself up for four months and uh, try to make something out of it. I'm, I'm not a very well-organized person. Mm. Um, I focus on a couple of simple things, but in terms of a very detailed plan, um, that's never been me. <laughs> um, I'm very good at improvising. I mean, you put me into a challenging situation, especially people shooting at me and stuff like this. I'm going to figure out like what I need to do to survive, but also to be able to get the story and to, to, to be able to bring it. Uh, I'm very lucky that I had a really good team. Dave Manessas, uh, the editor on this, uh, speaks Spanish fluently. Mm -hmm. uh, he comes originally from South America. Um, my team also um, knows how to work with me and knows that I want to know what they think. Um, you know, this film uh, could be self-indulgent, um, and you know, I wanted to make sure that uh, that I'm playing a role in it, but I'm not monopolizing the film. Every time I'm on camera, I go, <laughs> and, and you know, I start to cringe. Um, so it was the, the whole team's job to get this organized. And we went down many, many false paths in editing. Um, luckily, Netflix, you know, they, you know what they said to me? What? They said, we want to help you realize your vision as an artist, and we want to give you the resources to be able to. Can you imagine that? I mean, can you imagine your producer saying, listen, Nico, anything you need to be able to do your job, whatever you, you want, you can have, right? Nobody, I, people don't say that type of thing to independent filmmakers. That's and so this, this was really helpful. And we had the time and the staff to be able to, to explore mm -hmm. uh, how, how to tell the story. That's fantastic. Thanks very much, right, John. Thank you, guys. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Fred Finn Radio, the Festival thank Insider. You. Okay, bye, Fred.